All right, something big just dropped in robotics. Unitree, the Chinese company known for its humanoids and really fast robodogs, just showed its new H2 robot fighting the G1. And to take things even further, they put two H2 robots against each other, letting their real capabilities speak for themselves. That's a big deal, so let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome to the next gen AI. Between the H2 and the smaller G1, at a glance, it looks like a simple sparring moment, but what stands out on closer inspection is not the aggression, it's the stability. Each time the H2 delivers a strike, you can track how the load travels through the robot's lower body. The ankles compress slightly, and the hips counter-rotate just enough to keep the robot's center of mass from drifting outside its support area. This suggests that the H2's whole body controller isn't just executing choreographed motions. It's actively redistributing force across multiple joints in real time. That kind of force-aware motion control is essential for any robot expected to operate in unpredictable environments. The G1's response also provides useful insight. Even though it's significantly lighter, roughly half the mass of the H2, it doesn't immediately topple over. Unitree G1 attempts to maintain balance before eventually being overwhelmed by the difference in force. This highlights a fundamental difference between the two platforms. The G1 is optimized for agility and low-cost research scenarios, while the H2 operates in a completely different force regime. The interaction between them is less about one robot overpowering the other and more about stress testing how each frame behaves under sudden impulse. A key moment is the knee strike that lifts the G1 off the ground. The upward impulse from the H2 is strong enough to break the G1's contact with the floor, which immediately tells you something meaningful about H2's joint torque. Generating that motion requires high torque at the hip and knee, but more importantly, the supporting leg must handle the combined load of the robot's own body weight, plus the reaction force produced during the strike. The fact that the H2 remains steady after the impact, without visible oscillation or postural drift, suggests that Unitree's torque control loops are both fast and well damped. When the human strikes the H2, lightly but with enough contact to produce noticeable disturbance, the robot adjusts its footing almost immediately. You can see micro-adjustments at the ankle. These behaviors suggest that the H2's feedback loops are operating at a reasonably high frequency, allowing the system to respond quickly to the human's movements. What's also interesting is how the robot controls its strength. When the H2 counters with its own strikes, the movements appear controlled rather than ballistic. However, the human throws punches in a limited range at expected angles, with the H2 already facing them directly. We don't see the robot reacting to surprise movements. If this sequence involves teleoperation or motion imitation, which Unitree has used in past demonstrations, then it reflects the operator's precision more than the robot's autonomy. Unitree does not specify how much autonomy the H2 has during these interactions, so any conclusions about decision-making should remain conservative. The most interesting part of the demo is when two H2 robots start fighting with each other. Unlike the H2 and human interaction, where the human adjusts naturally, two robots interacting creates a perfectly symmetrical challenge. Both Unitree H2 produce force while simultaneously needing to resist it. When one H2 delivers a strike, the other experiences the impact with no built-in biological damping, no natural compliance. When the first robot throws a punch and the second robot leans back to handle it, the movement looks planned, not random. The robot leans back at the right time, which shows it either expects the hit or reacts fast enough to look like it does. Later, when one H2 lands a high kick that brushes the other's head, the second robot loses balance for a moment but quickly stands straight again using small hip and ankle movements. This shows the robot is pretty good at knowing its body position and fixing it quickly. Before comparing the robots directly, it helps to understand what the H2 is built for. 
The H2 is about 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighs around 154 pounds, and it has 31 joints that help it move in a human-like way. Its motors can produce a lot of force, up to 360 newton meters of torque, which is important for pushing, lifting, and handling heavy objects. The robot also has a three-joint waist, which lets it twist and bend more naturally so it can adjust its posture when dealing with weight or sudden bumps. Its sensors, like depth cameras and an IMU, constantly track its position and surroundings, helping it stay balanced and coordinate its whole body smoothly. The H2's battery system allows around one to two hours of operation depending on activity, which aligns with other full-scale humanoids in development today. The hot-swappable design reflects Unitree's interest in commercial applications, where downtime would otherwise limit productivity. Although the demonstration focuses on dynamic contact, the H2's intended purpose is broader. Inspection tasks, object handling, environmental navigation, and eventually repetitive industrial workflows. The H2 isn't finished yet, but this test shows it's moving beyond simple lab motions and starting to handle more realistic force and movement. That's an important step for humanoid robots. Xping just crossed a line most people weren't ready for. Their new female humanoid Iron doesn't look like a robot anymore. It looks like a real woman. The moment Iron walked onto the stage, it was obvious this wasn't a normal robot demo. The entire crowd went silent. Many genuinely believed a real woman was pretending to be a robot. Hey guys, welcome to NextGen AI. Today we're breaking down the female robot that looks shockingly human and how Iron is changing the way we think about robots forever. In the latest showcase, two female Iron robots walk side by side down a straight line. Their movements sync up so perfectly that your brain wants to believe you're looking at a mirror reflection. But here's the crazy part. They're both real robots moving in real time. There's no mirror at all. The coordination is insane because it proves these machines can mimic the same motion patterns with absolute precision. When you see them moving together like that, it just hits different. Now let's talk about why this walk feels so disturbingly human. Xping took inspiration from fashion models strutting down a catwalk. The robots place their feet in a perfect straight line. Their hips sway naturally. Their arms swing with every step. There's no clunky robot stiffness anywhere. This is where it gets mind-blowing. Xping built iron with a fake spine and muscle system that actually copies how human bodies work. Iron uses something called rapid imitation learning, which means the robot can watch and copy human movements in just seconds. The result? A walk so smooth that experts are calling it surprisingly lifelike. And that smoothness isn't just for show. It's the doorway to understanding what's happening inside this machine. Once you see irons move like that, you naturally wonder what kind of engineering makes it possible. Here's where things get even more interesting. Because once you understand the basics, you start to see the real engineering magic happening underneath. What really sets iron apart is the way Xping built irons from the inside. Instead of using stiff metal parts like older robots, iron has a flexible, human-like spine that bends and moves naturally. This lets irons shift iron's weight smoothly, absorb small impacts, and stay balanced the same way a real person does when walking or turning. Iron also has synthetic muscles, soft, stretchy actuators that work a lot like real muscle fibers. These muscles don't just pull iron's joints. They spread force across iron's whole body. That's why iron's hips sway, Iron's shoulders loosen, and Iron's torso moves with smooth, natural motion instead of sharp robot movements. When Iron walks like a person made of metal and software, moving in a way that feels almost alive. And that lifelike motion doesn't just look impressive, it leads directly into the bigger picture of why Iron matters. When a robot moves this convincingly, it changes everything. People might actually want to interact with these machines in offices, stores, or museums. You're not dealing with that old jerky robotics demo anymore. This is controlled, deliberate,
catwalk level precision, and that raises the bar for every other company in this space. Xping just showed us what's possible when you nail the hardware, tune the control algorithms perfectly, and integrate real-time adaptation. Before we move on, if you love deep dive robot breakdowns like this, subscribe to the Next Gen AI so you don't miss the next big AI moment. When Iron walked onto the stage at Xping's big event in Guangzhou, China, the company showed Iron's movement in a simple, controlled way. The team focused on Iron's balance, stability, and how smoothly Iron moved under real stage lighting. To make the demo clearer, Xping did something unusual. The engineers carefully removed a few pieces of Iron's outer skin right there on stage. This wasn't for drama. It was to show the audience what was actually inside. Under the surface were robotic joints, metal parts, and all the systems working together to create Iron's smooth movement. The surprising part? Even with some of the outside removed, Iron kept walking normally. This proved that the movement wasn't a trick, it was real engineering. So what makes Iron look so lifelike? Iron is about 5 feet 8 inches tall, similar to a real person. But the real difference is in the way Iron moves. Iron has 82 degrees of freedom across the body. Each hand has 22 moving points. This allows Iron to bend, turn, point, and grab things in a very natural way. Iron is powered by Xpeng's VLT brain, vision, language, and task. This system works with two more AI models, VLA, which helps Iron see and act, and VLM, which helps Iron understand what Iron is looking at. All of this runs on three custom chips that together deliver 2250 tops of computing power. Xpeng also chose to give Iron a female appearance for a reason. They want the robot to feel warm, gentle, and friendly for future home use. Buyers will even be able to pick different body types and styles. The CEO compared it to choosing a car color. In the future, people might choose their robots look the same way. What do you think? Is Iron impressive or a little too human for comfort? Let me know below. Let me tell you about Xpeng real quick, because it helps explain why Iron exists in the first place. Xping is one of China's biggest electric car companies, often called the Chinese Tesla. They've built smart, high-tech cars for years. But here's something interesting. Out of the seven robot versions Xping created, five were four-legged robots like robot dogs. They eventually stopped making those because human-shaped robots collect much better data in human spaces like homes, stores, and offices. Iron also comes with some strong hardware. Xpeng says Iron has the first all-solid-state battery ever used in a robot. These batteries are safer, last longer, and hold more energy. Iron also uses shape-changing fake muscles and soft skin with touch sensors to make interactions feel more natural. But even with all this advanced tech, Xpeng is careful about how they deploy Iron. They plan to start preparing for mass production this year and hope to begin full production by late 2026. Still, they're avoiding factory jobs because Iron's hands were out too fast, and they aren't ready to use Iron for home chores yet because homes are unpredictable and safety is a big concern. So for now, Iron's first real jobs will be in commercial spaces, helping customers, guiding visitors, or welcoming people at reception desks. The very first place people will see Iron working is Xpeng's own car stores. This lets the company test Iron in a safe, controlled environment. Here's why Iron matters. When a robot moves this smoothly and naturally, people are more willing to interact with it. Xpeng has raised the standard for the whole robotics industry. Iron's importance goes beyond looks or hardware. Iron makes us ask big questions about the future. How human-like should robots be? How do we want them to behave around us? Xpeng even added a new rule, a fourth law of robotics. Robots cannot share any human secrets or private information. Iron proves that the age of humanoid robots isn't coming someday. It's already here. Whether you find that exciting or a bit scary, one thing is certain. Xpeng's iron is a major step forward.
And that's why Iron is one of the most important humanoid robots of 2025.